the thing that I love today is that my grandmother was such a forward thinker. See, in the 50s, black people weren't allowed to sit in certain restaurants. They certainly weren't allowed to sit in the front of the restaurant, and they certainly couldn't sit wherever they wanted to. My grandmother dropped another little thing on me. She goes, when you come into my restaurant, if you have money to pay for your meal, you sit where you want. So we had this very diverse restaurant for the late 40s and the early 50s. And I've carried that with me, saying quit judging people by what you see them looking like and judge them by what they are. And I've carried that through my life and it's really kind of fun because I see these folks even today that look at somebody and judge you. To take all that away and say, I wonder what they are. I wonder what they've done. Man, I know there's something that this guy's done or this lady's done. I had lunch with a lady yesterday that told me, and again, had I labeled her, this would have never come out of my mouth. She was the roller skating national champion of the United States when she was 18 years old. Just a little tidbit of information. Strong competitor, blah, 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 all this stuff. But look at her today. She goes, you don't see that in me today. But I'm in a different part of my life now. And I'm doing things differently. But that carries me through because it was that drive for the championship that I put into my life, my family, and my business. So see, she just redirected her championship run from being a roller skater to now being a champion in business. The great news is that, and I, I want to ask this, how many of you have ever been on a championship team or been told by your peers you're the best at what we do? You were number one. Okay. The neat thing about that is those that raise their hand have sensed what it's like to be a champion. I'm here to tell you I've been blessed with championships in sports. I've been blessed with championships in business. And I like to think I've been blessed with championships in life with having five children. And three of those are girls. The great news about that is Ladies, I'm speaking to y'all now. I coached all of my kids, but the girls, you coach different. See, with a boy, I tell you, let's go. We're going to get out here. We're going to, let's hit it, make it happen. The kids just, the boys just go with it. You do that to a girl, she goes, excuse me. <laughs> you don't talk to me that way. And if you do, I'm going to go over here and sit down, and I'm not moving until you decide to apologize. <laughs> Tell me am I wrong, girls. Well, this little league softball team that my daughter wanted to be on, now my daughter is very thin, okay? So what position do you think she wanted to play? It's an oxymoron here. Very thin. Catcher. Why? She thought the outfit was cool. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what she said. She said, Dad, can I be catcher? Because I really think the outfit's cool. I like that. I want that. We had brand new chest protector and you know, face mask. She was all into it. She wanted that. And it was like, well, sweetie, they're going to run into you. She goes, I don't care. I can take them. I got two older brothers. <laughs> I don't have to say any more. She was ready, and she was a little bulldog back there. But the thing about this story that's so neat is I had the Bad News Bears that year. It was over in Alamo Heights, and we were the team. It was my first year coaching, the first year of this team, so we got what everybody else didn't want. I love those kind of teams because those are the ones that will win because they think they can. See, they haven't already been trained. They can't win. They're there going, man, we're going to win this thing. Let's do it. What's 10 games? We win. Look at those people. They don't even know how to swing a bat. 
Well, we did. And the thing that was fun is I also had a couple coaches that coached like men to boys. And the girls would do exactly what I said they would do. And these coaches didn't understand why they would just walk away. Excuse me, I'm talking to you. And when you apologize, I'll come back. And off, you know, and they didn't know how to handle it. And the good news of this, I will tell you that we won the championship that year, which is neat. But the way we won it was even cooler. It was the fact we were down in the last inning by 12 runs. And we were getting beat horribly. I mean, it was one of those, it was like, the run's over. You know, we're done. And the coach is screaming, he's going crazy out there on first base, and the girls are starting to whimper and they're crying, which, you know, a lot of guys don't do that one, so it was kind of tough. You go, okay, they're crying in the dugout. What do we do? And I thought, hmm, well, I've got kids. I know what I would do if it were my daughters. I walked in, I said, who knows a joke? Okay, girls, this game is just so funny. Who knows a joke? And there was some little joke that came up, you know, like what color was Washington's white horse? You know, white, and all the girls laughed. Then somebody else told a joke. And then before long, the whole dugout's wanting to tell jokes. And they're just relaxed, totally relaxed, enjoying themselves. The pressure's off. The umpires are yelling at us, excuse me, hello, there's a game on out here. Are you guys going to come out and play? Be right there, because if you don't talk to me like that, because if you do, you know. So what happened was the girls got loose and they had fun. I said, you know what, girls, it doesn't matter. Let's go. Let's go play some baseball. Let's have some fun. Let's do what you all like to do. Bottom line, we won. And it was a heck of a comeback. And the girls remembered that because it was like they said, that was the first time we really felt this pressure that people talk about that you can get on yourself, this pressure of not being able to perform. And what they realized was there's all kinds of different ways to release that pressure. And this was simply by telling a few jokes taking the time to observe the situation and realizing you needed to change something because what you were doing wasn't working.